the China picture does look a bit uh, concerning. Uh, there is a cyclical recovery, but it seems now it's getting a bit overwhelmed by all these structural problems, especially the debt problem, the housing problem. And the government hasn't done much to help the economy to regain its strength. Uh, with all the data, it seems that the, you know, the pressure on them to act bit more to stabilize the situation, at least, is definitely rising. Um, I don't mean to be ignorant, uh, but, but but what more can the government do? We already have incredible generous terms uh, in terms of triple R's compared with elsewhere around the globe. We're seeing a huge indebtedness at every single level across the Chinese economy now as well. Does the Chinese government have the firepower? They do. They do have some firepower, but you're absolutely right. You know, there there is a question about how to support the economy. The methods they have been using for years, for decades, is to you know boost the uh, credit growth, especially for the infrastructure and for the housing. And these kind of methods are reaching the end of the road. But it doesn't mean that they will not use it because it doesn't seem that they are coming up with or even thinking about new method, which is more like the other countries supporting the households. They're not entertaining this idea. So I think in the short term, the most likely situation is they're going to keep using uh, a little bit of everything they've done in the past. We, uh, if we talk about some of the uh, monetary stimulus that uh, the customer, the retail spender has received lately, we just saw that in the last 24 hours with major banks in China effectively cutting the deposit rate, uh, forcing money back into the economy. How significant is that move this time around? Because we know a lot of Chinese are not sitting on supersized savings at this stage. I, I'm afraid that uh, these kind of moves may not help, which again goes to back to the argument, you know, what they need to do is to support the households in terms of income and consumption rather than just keep lowering interest rates. Because it's quite clear after the crash in the housing sector last year, the Chinese household's balance sheet is a bit damaged by the decline in the housing prices, which is one of their biggest investments um, you know, of their portfolio then you can understand why you know, they don't feel so much about leverage up further to invest or to consume. And they don't see much uh, investment opportunity they can you know, put their money in and get good return. So deposits may still feel like a safe place for them. Speaking of sick, sick parts of the economy, there's been a lot of uh, reporting around some of the local government entities, just what sort of position in when they've seen revenue fall because of the lockdowns and joined over COVID that uh, the amount of debt uh, has also increased very rapidly over the space of time. And when, when it comes to overall public debt in China, uh, sitting, according to Goldman Sachs, what, $23 trillion, 126% of GDP. Just how tight are the levers now when we take a look at the debt picture? The, the, when I was saying, you know, the Chinese government has scope to support economy, I'm mostly talking about the central government. Their debt is only 20% of GDP. The local government, they do have high leverage, but it's it's because of their you know infrastructure companies. And for that, it's reaching the end of the road that they really have to speed up the debt restructuring. So this again, you know, goes back to the point that adding more infrastructure may not be helpful or even you know effective in terms of supporting economy. China is at the stage that they need to do debt restructuring. And if they do it slowly, the risk is that they're gonna get stuck in deflation.